皆様お待たせいたしました続いてのセッションはこちら API3 のストラテジーリードウーグメルセンですメルセンさんですウーグさんお願いします The next session is from Ugu Mensen, strategy lead for API3. Welcome to the stage. Test, test. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, hi, my name is Ugur.、Uh, I work at API3. For those of you who don't know what API3 is, it's an Oracle project. And today I'll be talking about、uh, how we're going to revolutionize DeFi with MEV aware oracles. Uh, if you don't know what MEV stands for, it's for maximum extractable value. You've probably heard of this before.、Um, there are a bunch of Oracle projects out there, and every single one of them is known for kind of its own little niche.、Uh, there are the big players that you probably saw, something like Chainlink,、uh, and then there's、uh, other players like Chronicle and so on. And what all of these have in common is that they provide data on blockchains. So they take, for instance, prices like Bitcoin and put them on the blockchain so applications like lending protocols like Aave can use them.、Uh, one core issue is、uh, all of these compete essentially for the same market. On the right side, you see how much each of these oracles is securing. And,、uh, The funny thing is,、uh, this slide is titled Meaningful Numbers Without Meaning. And、uh, the core reason for that is that no matter how high this number on the right side goes, these oracles don't make any money. So this、uh, entire industry could go up by 10x more, but oracles don't earn anything by providing data. So if they don't earn any money,、uh, what's the game plan for these oracle projects? And all of them kind of have the same game plan. So, the number one is that you、uh, climb this corporate ladder that I'm showing you. So, this is the DeFi Llama dashboard. Everybody tries to get to the top here, secure as much value as possible. To do that, you oftentimes see Oracle projects bribing other projects to use them because that makes them climb up. After you achieve that and you amassed some projects, you market essentially very heavily how much you're securing because look, I'm at number three now. And the fact that you bribe people to get there doesn't actually matter at the slightest. And step three, what all of these Oracle projects have in common is they heavily sell their token because there's no other means of making money because data is always made available for free. This is something that,、uh, I mean, the summary essentially is. Nobody makes money、uh, since everybody is kind of dumping their token on you. From the perspective of consumers, everybody does the same thing. It doesn't matter if you get your data from Chainlink, Chronicle, or us, you kind of always get data from multiple sources aggregated on chain. And since none of these dApps,、uh, Oracles, have any competitive edge, business development is reduced to bribing people with token incentives. This is a game that we didn't want to. Partake in because it's not sustainable and just dumping your token is also not a valid business model. So, we looked into a different area how we can add value to the ecosystem and、uh, landed at Oracle Extractable Value. So, Oracle Extractable Value is a subset of MEV that is related to Oracle transactions.、Uh, essentially, whenever you update a price on chain, That can lead to certain opportunities. For instance, if you update the price that Aave utilizes, you might be able to liquidate a user position. And typically, that liquidation has a certain incentive for it. So that Oracle update has a certain number of value attached to it.、Uh, very easy example here also on GMX. For those of you who don't know what GMX is, it's a derivatives platform、uh, that allows you to go essentially 50x long on the ETH price. The important thing is, it, it, it doesn't work like the Binance、uh, leverage trading platform where you have an order book and you buy from someone that sells you. You go long on the Oracle price. The problem with blockchains, however, is that the Oracle prices, you see them in the mempool. So, what you can do is, when you see some,、uh, the new Oracle price coming, you go long before the Oracle price, you wait for the Oracle to update. And you close your position right after. And you always can extract value this way because you always see essentially what comes next. This is pretty similar to how Robinhood sells your order flow data or any trading platform sells your order flow. 
Oracle data is visible on the blockchain, and you can essentially exploit and arbitrage when new transactions are coming in. This happened on uh, this uh, protocol called GMX, which is one of the largest derivative, derivatives trading platforms, over several weeks. And they were consistently able, MEV bots, to extract 10% of all profits uh, over the entire weeks. Uh, how big is the issue? Um, if you look at the major lending protocols in the space, like Aave, like Compound or Venus, uh, since the last four years, they collectively lost over 300 million to this. Uh, the protocols don't themselves don't see this as a loss because they are not paying it. It's kind of the users that are getting overcharged on the platforms. Just to show you uh, basically where this value loss comes from a lending protocol uh, perspective. So lending protocols utilize oracles to determine what your collateral is worth. If you're using Aave, you're putting ETH into it, and Aave needs to know what is that ETH worth. So they're using an oracle like Chainlink, and Chainlink tells them, well, this ETH is worth $2,500. On the basis of this, you can then take a loan. Let's say they allow you to take half of your collateral value in loan, so you can take out a loan of $1,250. Once you take out a loan, you see something called the health factor. As long as your health factor is above one, you're all good. You can keep your loan. The moment your health factor drops below one, for instance, when the price of ETH starts falling, uh, you're in danger of liquidation. And what the Aave protocol does is uh, they typically offer a discount on your collateral. So they allow anyone to come in and liquidate you, and they typically get a 5 to 10% discount on your collateral to buy it up. So anyone can come in and do this. Aave does this, so there's competition for this. So a typical liquidation on such a lending protocol would go like this. Uh, the first thing that happens is that the Oracle updates. After the Oracle updates, you typically uh, then are potentially in the danger of liquidation by your health factor falling below one. And once that happens, everybody can see that on the blockchain. So searchers can see that you as a user are now in a liquidable spot. And the interesting part now is that once that is available and you, they can liquidate you on chain, these people, or basically all of us, can compete on the blockchain to liquidate you. And what happens is that the auction for this happens essentially on a block space level. So the person that can bribe block builders the most to get their transaction in first is going to liquidate you, so the highest paying person. And after that, you're basically liquidated at the end. The liquidating person, the searcher, gets their money minus whatever they bribed to the block builders. So how much are these searchers then effectively earning? And there's a pretty nice report by Monoceros called the MEV book. And they went into this and analyzed basically the data of the last four years around liquidations and came to the conclusion that liquidations are highly competitive uh, as a strategy because it's very simple to perform. And this means at the end that liquidators are paying 99.9% .9 of their revenue to validators. Like they're bribing essentially nearly the entire amount that is up for grabs and giving that to block builders. A uh, slight example to show this here. Uh, on the right side, you see the biggest liquidation on Aave this year happened three weeks ago. Uh, the person got liquidated for 10.4 million. Uh, at the bottom, you see um, the revenue part. The available revenue for this liquidation was $802,200. And above that, you see the profit. So the searcher made $87 because at the cost section you see that they bribed for $802,130. So this essentially reiterates what they come up with. If there is an opportunity on chain, the people are so competitive with each other that they almost give up the entire competition, like the entire revenue that is available. So the funny part on this, however, is that this entire flow was started with the Oracle updating. So what if we just uh, essentially, sorry, the entire thing essentially starts with the Oracle updating. So if the Oracle kind of did it on their own, essentially update the price and liquidate, all of this on the right side would not even happen. So to summarize, uh, 
the fees on these trade on these platforms are way too high. It can't be that you pay eight hundred thousand uh, dollars as liquidation incentives on a ten million dollar uh, loan. That's basically a ten percent loss for the user. That doesn't need to be there. This becomes very evident because the people liquidating you are giving away ninety nine percent of the available revenue that they are getting, and the oracle technically holds all the power to kind of not allow this. So uh, we essentially thought, how can we solve this issue? And did that by essentially thinking about, why don't we take these auctions that happen on the block space level and take them to the Oracle level? So instead of the people fighting to get their transaction included first, we sell the highest bidding person the data that even allows for the liquidation. And that essentially supersedes all prior competition. And uh, the result is our product called the OEV network. Um, just to explain this a bit, it might be complicated. On the bottom left side, you see a bunch of Oracle nodes. Uh, people like CoinGecko, uh, CoinPaprika, a lot of very famous data businesses in the space. And they maintain a price feed on the right side. Uh, it's the Mantle network, and they maintain a price like ETHUSD. Now, the important part here is that this price is artificially delayed by 30 seconds, and it's basically imagined this as the regular highway that everybody can use. Everybody can use for free a 30-second delayed price. Now the important part comes in. The same Oracle nodes sell uh, real-time data, so basically not 30-second delayed, over our layer two uh, called the OEV network. And you now, as a as a person that wants to take advantage of a future price, can come in and use this express lane. So it basically acts similar to how you're on a highway and you want to go faster, you can pay to go faster. And we give this data that is 30 seconds, so to speak, in the future to the highest bidder. What do we do with the money that comes back? That money essentially flows back to the DAP. So uh, the end result of this is that um, the 800K that you saw on the previous slide that gets basically given to block producers is now by us taken away from them because our auction supersedes their auction and we give it back to the DAP. So Aave can now decide what they do with it. Uh, they can put it into their own treasury or whatever. Uh, and this is kind of very similar to something that Arbitrum has came up with in uh, recent weeks. Uh, we're also in heavy discussions with them about this. Arbitrum, for those of you who don't know, is a layer two solution, basically the biggest there is currently. And they have been discussing something called time boost. And time boost on Arbitrum is uh, effectively a system that is going to delay regular users by like 500 milliseconds and offer an express lane to those willing to pay. So basically what I just described to you about our Oracle data which kind of gives our design a bit more validation because these people are essentially also willing to do this to extract as much of value as possible and bring it back to their ecosystem. And the end result is that if you look at this liquidation on Ava that I've shown you and I've kind of already hinted at this, uh, we can now run auctions for these 802,130 that are given away needlessly to block builders and return that to dApps. Uh, so basically, what does that mean for API 3? Uh, of this value that we return, we take a small cut. Uh, how, everybody, or how other MEV solutions also do, imagine something like 10 to 20%. And now we have a business model that actually generates money and is not built on relentlessly selling our own token for basically uh, no usage. Uh, and we can basically make, let's say if we take 10%, we make $1 for every $9 that we return to a potential customer. And that way, they're ha very happy because they get $9, and uh, they don't mind that much that we make a dollar of money that they never would have gotten to begin with. And that's basically it. So uh, just to repeat, we're API 3. We do price feeds, but uh, we also pay you for using them. Ugo-san, arigatou gozaimashita. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Ugo-san. We'll be starting the next session momentarily. Thank you for your patience.